The best place to cry is in a hot yoga class. If you go to a posh studio, they dim the lights so nobody can see your tears. And the really posh ones don't have any mirrors on the walls because the skinny blonde management is focused on inclusivity. So you're safe to scowl to your heart's content. You get your workout out of the way, losing water weight through both sweat and tears. And you can often strike an outstandingly vinyasic balance between the stretch and the sob. Downward Dog provides an appropriate cover to let the tears start flowing. As you stretch your arms into mountain, you can wipe your snot away. And if you combine Warrior Two with weights, you can release the strain on your tear ducts with some focused arm pulses. Phew. When the music lulls to a zen whisper and everybody's lying down like crickets, ears pinpricked for any sudden sound that might disrupt their five minutes of quietude. Try to hold it together. It'll only be a few minutes until... Ah! <laughs> Sigh! Oh yes, the obnoxious yogis have launched into their mating call breathing rituals. <laughs> and for a short while longer, you are free to gasp with all of the grief and heartbreak and sorrow and regret that fills you. Right now, it's the only thing that fills me. Namaste. <laughs> the best place to cry is in the toilets at work. Now, this is a controversial one. Many people have informed me about the importance of separating your work and personal life. And it truly does depend on your company culture. So make sure to check the handbook before you start bawling behind a bathroom stall. But I found that there's nothing more appropriately satisfying than using your five minute ergonomic, or if it's a tough day, one hour lunch break, to just let it all go. But be warned, only proceed if you feel as if you're up for the challenge of potentially becoming friends with a colleague. <laughs> when they stumble in on you blowing your nose, although they were diverted from their original business, You've likely found an ally in the office to fix your makeup, give you a nod at your desk, and who just knows why you sometimes can't get the work done. When I was losing it on a Tuesday morning, blubbering in front of the mirror after I had seen a slew of unsettling social media content, which is not advisable to scroll through on an empty heart, the colleague who did walk in didn't shun their eyes away or drown me out with a loud flush. When you cry at work, you find out who your true companions are. The best place to cry is at the airport check-in counter. <laughs> I'm not certain, but I assume every airline must host a training session for their staff on what to do when a passenger cries. Because in my experience, the check-in ladies are quite comforting. Your sudden outburst of tears provides a surprising distraction from the usual airport chaos of pesky children using the family suitcases as snowboards and dad shouting at them to just please calm down. Fellow passengers roped in the line fly their eyes over to observe the check-in counter crying protocol, engaged enough in this girl's life to perhaps lend a hand after they get checked in themselves always tighten your own mask first, but also hoping to keep a distance based on the high chance that she, and I think it's clear that we're talking about me here, is absolutely crazy. <laughs> Airports are snow globes of germs and stress, and we cannot be expected to hold it all together when flights are a bloody fortune, are delayed and delayed again. You're skirting by on 20 different visas. You're over the suitcase weight limit. Your mask is filling up with water, but you've got to keep it on because you don't want to contract COVID because you're flying home to try and win back the absolute love of your life and you've just been told that you need more documents signed by the government before you can board the flight. We should all just be content with staying like cement in the places we were born so we can't fly off and try out a new life which doesn't work out. <laughs> I am extremely lucky to have visited so many airports and I've had the chance to cry at all of their check-in desks. <laughs> but I am starting to get the feeling that if the airport staff, tissues in hand, recognize you 
every single time you arrive for your flight back to the US, you might just be flying in the wrong direction. Who really knows what is right and wrong for me anymore? It doesn't feel right that home makes me cry because I'm no longer with you, but it also doesn't feel right that everywhere else makes me cry because I am not home. Alas, in the process of frantically trying to figure things out, some words of travel advice. Try not to block up the airport check-in line for too long. They're less empathetic to your tears then. <laughs> the best place to cry is when you're with your mom or your mom equivalent. With her, there's no ticking timer that quite often materializes when you're with casual friends who wait for their measuring cup of patience to fill three quarters of the way before they must dash off. With her, there's no necessary induction before the tragedy unfolds because the details of your scene are not important, only your feelings are. With her, there are no words no correct moments, no pauses, no sighs, no not right nows, no anythings. With your mom, there's nothing except to cry and cry. And while she sits next to me and tells me that heartbreak won't feel like this forever, for however long into the night, sometimes that is the only thing I need. The best place to cry is in a bubbleless bathtub. Right when you realize that he doesn't love you anymore and you feel like the entire world is ending, so to protect yourself from the impending tornado, earthquake, tsunami, zombie apocalypse of your heart, you climb into the bathtub fully clothed with a few pillows like the best doomsday prepper on earth and hide it out. Outside of the bath, time moves forward. But while lying down, deep down, in this waterless coffin, it is still. No taps flow, no bubbles pop, no soaps fizzle, no water swirls in waves of turquoise and blush and rose. It is so still here that I don't notice when my older sister's boyfriend hovers over the edge of the bathtub and tries to talk to me. Mimi, he says, a boyfriend is supposed to be the cherry on top of your life, not the entire ice cream sundae. I don't like ice cream very much, or any dessert for that matter. I picture fluffy scoops of chocolate, cookies and cream and mint piled high in a cone. And then all of it, suddenly, on one scorching day, melting over me in a bathtub, drowning me in a warm pool bubbling into a sticky concoction of sugary, sweet, syrupy, sickly poison with rainbow sprinkles on top. I've never thought to top my ice cream cones with a cherry before. My tears slide down my cheeks into the ice cream bath and I nod, but I don't think I understand what he means just yet. The best place to cry is in your room while you're hosting a dinner party in the stairwell of an 80s dance club, listening to Taylor Swift, while dancing, while driving, while walking, in the pool at night with your sisters, when you're being detained by immigration officers, <laughs> sitting in the hairdressers with your hair in a pineapple knot, hidden in the back of a wardrobe behind fluffy coats, on a call with your best friend in her boss's office, on a Ferris wheel in the late afternoon. I used to feel extremely embarrassed to cry about the soppy stuff in front of anybody. Whenever I was reading a sad book, I'd feel the need to sit in private, go to the bathroom, or if others were around, turn away so they couldn't see my face because God forbid, if they saw me tearing up, beetroot cheeks at the pages of the kite runner, it would be the end of the world. She cares, she has empathy. <laughs> I once went to watch the Fault in Our Stars film and my sister informed me that she had seen me crying. Caught in the act, I was mortified. <laughs> Sharing this with people now is quite funny. Some find it endearing. Regardless, even with an entire storybook list of places to cry in and people to cry with, 
for the longest time of my adult life. There has only ever been one person who can make me feel truly better when I cry. Only one person I ever felt immediately comfortable to cry with. And being with him when I was sad, when I was unable to get the words out to explain anything or make sense of the world, was the most wonderful feeling. I think you know you found the one when the only place you want to cry is when you're with them. Whenever we have parted ways, be it for a short while or forever, I have this slippery and suffocating bubble in my throat and nose and eyes and the side of my right pinky finger starts to ache and I just, giggling under the sheets in your childhood bedroom, surrounded by your toys, your treasures, your posters, your photographs, my letter pressed under your glass desk. We whisper everything we mean to each other while holding hands so tightly, unaware of how complicated these promises may be one day. You and me against the world, forever and always. You turn and take your cheeks in my hands and we kiss, and I smile and you smile and we kiss smiling. You meant everything to me, and you filled my heart, and all that we shared is yours to keep. I will never forget it. I could never bring myself to. If you do not have that person to cry with anymore, it will be okay. There is a whole world of places where maybe, just maybe, you can find them or somebody else to cry with again, and it will be different but it could be wonderful. And then that will become the best place to cry for you. I hope we find it soon. Oh, I really hope. <laughs> Mimi Thompson! <laughs>